our body is a very smart machine and if we heat up we can actually pretty quickly die it doesn't like if you know if you think about it you're from a fahrenheit perspective from a fahrenheit perspective like you 38 and a half 39 i mean uh 98 99 degrees is kind of your normal body temperature but if you just go up to like 104 5 6 like you need to go to the hospital and that's a pretty narrow space and our body is or pretty ineffective in how we use energy so when we work out and move etc 80 percent of the energy is actually lost in heat and just 20 percent is used for the actual movement so when we work out we heat up a lot however in a muscle the uh, so like the m- metabolism in a muscle can go up 50 60 times when we work out hard but the blood flow doesn't increase as much so we heat up that's where we start sweating etc welcome to another episode of the matter over mind experience i'm your host master trainer and weight management expert narado zico powell today i have a blockbuster episode for you today and a topic that i've yet to have on my show I have Timothy Hammond, and we're going to talk about palm cooling. Yes, I said it, palm cooling. Do you know the benefits that palm cooling can have for recovery and performance and strength in your athleticism? And yes, even if you're not a professional athlete, but you're working out and you're trying to get the best results that you can, palm cooling can be so good for you. So you really want to stick around for this episode because there's a lot for myself and for you to learn. So, Timmy, welcome to the show, my man. Thank you very much, Siko. Uh, I'm really, really happy to be here and excited to talk about this. I think it's a very fascinating area of uh, performance increases, as you can say, or as you said, it kind of straddles everybody. It's not just for peak performance or for elite athletes. It's something that everyday users can really benefit from as well. So we're very happy to be here and talk about this subject. Yes, and especially when we're talking about recovery because recovery is needed for anyone who does anything in life, right? And oftentimes the difference between injury and not injury is are you recovering well enough? So I, I wanna talk about so many benefits that Palm Cooling can have for all of us, including myself. But before we even get there, I'm just curious, what sparked your interest? Yeah, so I, worked out for a long uh, period of time and can I can be a bit geeky, geek down on things, etc. And then, you know, try to find science and listening to podcasts and things like that. And I actually listened to the Uberman Lab podcast, which you might be aware of. It's one of the really kind of uh, new stars on the area of the sports uh, and uh, nutrition podcasts. And he started talking about this uh, palm cooling and he was talking about studies uh, and kind of one of the main studies that have been done about this is where they had a group of trained guys did pull-ups and they did 10 sets of pull-ups in this study and uh, with three minute rest in between. And then they started doing palm cooling and after six weeks of doing palm cooling, they had increased the amount of pull-ups they could do by 144% in six weeks. I mean, you know, I know anybody who's trained a bit like that is just enormous gains. So I right away, like, get really interested. I digged out this study, started reading it. Uh, then he had another podcast, actually, where he interviewed the guy who had done this, uh, Dr. Uh, Craig Heller, from also from Stanford. And he was talking about a had a NFL player in who used to play tight end at uh, San Francisco 49ers. And... He came in and they asked him, like, what are you really good at? And he said, well, I'm really good at dips. So they had him do dips, rest of three minutes, dips. And he did, like, off the five set, he felt like he was too tired to continue. Then he came in three days later, did palm cooling between the sets. First one, he did practically the same. The second set, he could do eight reps more than last time. And he kept on doing more reps for on each set so after five sets he had increased 30 reps 
in total, which is 30% on a guy that's an NFL player, like peak physical condition. But the best thing was that he wasn't tired. He could do four more sets. So he just kept on pumping. Um, and then after the, they kept having me back, and after five weeks coming in twice a week doing pump cooling, he had tripled his workload. It increased by 201% with a total amount of reps. So I just, yeah, I read the study. I listened to this and I heard about it. I was like, I got to try this. <laughs> like, man, I got to try this. It was, it was just too good to be true. Like sometimes you hear about things that like, oh yeah, someone gets a 5% increase. And I'm like, I'm not going to jump over hurdles to get a 5% increase. But when people double that workout load, load I'm, I'm going to really like try this out. So that's how I sparked my interest in this. Oh, so what could this, this just sounds like one of those things that's too good to be true, right? <laughs> so when you watch, watch the podcast and then you heard of all of these results, what, what was the next thing that you did? Yeah. So the next thing was that, as I said, like, I felt like I got to try this. So, uh, and the guys who had came up with this, they had created a, a glove that you could use. Unfortunately, one hand costs fifteen hundred dollars, uh, so three grand for two. And I was like, I want to try it. I don't want to try it that much. So I I sat down in the gym and I had a water bucket that I put my hands in, and then I had eyes to keep the temperature at the right level because you don't want it to be too cold because then the you get vasoconstriction, meaning that your blood vessels close up. And it becomes counterproductive. So it should be around 15 degrees Celsius. That's about 45, 50 uh, Fahrenheit. That's kind of the ideal temperature. So I sat in the gym with my hands in a bucket and ice and a little rod to make sure that I had the right temperature and rested for three minutes and yeah, tested this out. Um, looked a bit weird. I get a lot of weird questions. <laughs> People wonder what the heck I was doing. But the results uh the best one i had because one thing what i realized with this is that it works better the higher rep you do because you kind of heat up more because it is a cooling thing if you're very low rep it doesn't give as much of an kind of impact for you but the shoulder press which was the exercise where i performed or improved the most i improved 48 uh, percent in five weeks and I am 40 plus and I have 15 years, 17 years gym experience. I haven't seen gains that like that even when I was a newbie. So yeah, I was like, wow, this is really, really cool. But yeah, practically sitting with my hands in water through the, <laughs> between every set, uh, it wasn't, yeah, that wasn't a fantastic solution uh, long term. So I kind of stopped doing that and used other uh, ways like I had a what's it called an ice pack with a towel between my hands and a, as a bit of a more of a mid it's not as effective because the towel doesn't transfer the heat as well but it was significantly more practical than carrying around a this size water bucket at the gym between every exercise etc yeah <laughs> Yeah, no, man. I... Yeah, no, there was more than one person that came up to me and like th there were different questions, but most people are, wonder what the heck I was doing. <laughs> I wouldn't have been too, I would have walked up, even if I've never seen you before. I'm like, dude, what is this? <laughs> like, what's like, happening here? My view of that is kind of like, I like the people who ask because I saw everybody stared. <laughs> And most people didn't ask, but I, I prefer the ones that came up and asked because that's kind of like people are curious and I would have been as well. So I, I appreciate that. It was, uh, so, it was so, you heard, <laughs> so, you, so you heard and then you perform and then you saw the results. I, again, I would assume with a water bucket, even with, because it's, it's even with uh, the towel and the ice, because the, uh, he has to stay what, about 45 degrees um, Fahrenheit, correct? Yes. Yeah, so, so it, 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 about that temperature is kind of where it's ideal. Um, it matters a bit as well, like the why I figured out later on, because I'm actually, I studied engineering at university and stuff. So I kind of like know a bit of thermodynamics and, and so forth. And I realized that the, the towel, for example, 
that that can be significantly colder because the heat doesn't transfer as quickly. I also realized that to have my hands in water wasn't ideal either because what they have used in the experiments is more of a metal thing and so forth, and that has a higher heat transferability for the palm. So if I would have had something that was more metal-based, I the performance increases would probably have been better. But it was good enough. That could possibly even control the uh the uh the temperature itself as far as keeping it around 45, right? Am I yeah, exactly. And that's what I was getting at because and the reason why I said that really is because I don't want anyone to say, let's walk around with a bucket of water and start doing these things. So I want to kind of pick up on that, you know. Okay, I'd be careful what we say on this show. <laughs> yeah. But thank you for that. So we have a couple of like really big things to talk about then, because then we're going to talk about the science behind it. Just make sure you really understand what's going on. And Timmy's going to break that down for us. And then we're going to talk also about his peak performance bar, which he seems to com combine with palm cooling, which even brings his, um, his results up to a different level. So we got a couple of more amazing things to talk about. But before I do that, I want to quickly make a switch and talk about one of my favorite company, which is the Amino Co. And if you've been watching me for a while, you know I'm going to talk about my their wonderful drink, Perform. And I know T Timmy, prob Timmy probably takes uh, um, essential aminos or at least branch chain aminos and creatine. So this is what Perform is. Their products are 100% science-backed. That's built on amino acid technology that was first funded by NASA and further refined through rigorous research and independent clinical trials. So Perform is an EAA, essential amino acid-based formulation. And check this out. It's designed to improve um, muscle performance when exercise, enhance mental clarity and concentration, reduce fatigue and dehydration, and minimize recovery time. So we're talking about the same, the same exact thing in this actual episode as well. So I love Perform because it's EAA. So it's not just brand chain. It's essential amino formulation. And it has um, creatine as well. And it has... Um, about, I want to say, 60 milligrams of caffeine in each serving. So the reason why I love that is because Dr. Robin Wolf, he figured out that if he, one, put a certain amount, of, he put this particular formulation, essential aminos together, along with creatine, that will boost your performance. And it was a fantastic, um, um, it's a fantastic formula. I've been using it for over two years, and it's done great for me. And I drink it as a pre-workout. Instead of drinking... 400 milligrams of caffeine before my workout. I have this before and it and I bang through. You know when your boy train, your boy goes hard in the paint. And this definitely helps me to do so. In fact, the ingredients it perform, and this is a clinical trial that is proven, 20% increase in exercise completed, 22% increase in um, endurance, 11% increase in peak performance doing exercise, and 10% improvement in cognitive function doing exercise. That's how great perform has worked in these clinical trials. And I'm telling you, it's done wonderful things for me. The website is uh, aminoco.com slash Zico Health. You click on there, see this handsome face just looking at you, and you get 30% discount off their wonderful products. I'll make sure that the link is in, uh, is in the uh, description of the show. So you click on it and you can save your 30% on some wonderful products. And I see Tim laughing at me. He's like, what handsome face this guy talking about? Well, now with that being said, we're rolling back an episode because we want to get into palm cooling. We want to talk a little more about the science. People can really understand what's actually happening here. So, Timmy, for my audience, explain to them what's actually happening on a scientific level. Why is palm cooling really beneficial? Uh, yeah, so it's actually pretty simple. Uh, our body is a very smart machine. And if we heat up, we can actually pretty quickly die. It doesn't like if you know if you think about it. You're from a Fahrenheit perspective, from a Fahrenheit perspective, like you're 38 and a half, 39. Or, I mean, uh, 98, 99 degrees is kind of your normal body temperature. But if you just go up to like 104, 5, 6, like you need to go to the hospital, and that's a pretty narrow space. And our body is or pretty ineffective in how we use energy. So when we work out and move, etc. 80% of the energy is actually lost in heat and just 20% is used for the actual movement. So when we work out, we heat up a lot. However, in a muscle, the uh, to, like the metabolism in a muscle can go up 50, 60 times when we work out hard, but the blood flow doesn't 
increase as much. So we heat up, that's where we start sweating, etc. But the body doesn't want us to heat up too much because then we can actually die and we can cook our muscles. So it has put in a protection mechanism in, in the muscle. There is a, um, an enzyme called pyruvate kinase, which helps produce the ATP or the energy in the muscle. And this enzyme is heat sensitive. So as soon as your body temperature and your muscle temperature goes up, it starts shutting down the energy production. And therefore, this also impacts how you feel. Like if you think about it, if you're out, I mean, you live in Florida, like if it's really hot outside, etc., you go out and you lie on the beach, you're like, you don't feel like running a marathon, do you? Because your body knows it's hot outside, so it doesn't want you to go run a marathon because you can very quickly overheat and that can lead to death. So this is a pure protection mechanism. So if we can cool down our body systematically, whatever we do, we can lift for longer, we can uh, run for longer, etc. And that leads us then to the thing, how do you quickly, or the quickest way, cool down your body? Uh, a lot of people would say that you use like the wrist of your hands, etc. And the logic behind that is same, because you have a lot of, like that's where your largest uh, veins are, so you can kind of get the best contact with the blood in your body. However, what people have, that theory is missing is that there is actually three areas of your body which have completely different blood vessels. It's the palms of your hands, your, this part of your face above the beard line, and the bottom of your feet. This skin is called glabrous skin because it doesn't have any hair follicles. Even though like we're humans, we have hair left, right, and center, but we don't consider ourselves having hair everywhere. However, there is hair follicles on everywhere else. And here we have a much tighter set of blood vessels so we can transfer the heat faster. And what is also interesting is that these blood vessels, they're directly connected to our heart. They don't go through thin capillaries, which is kind of like a lot of resistance for the blood. So they go on more like freeways straight to our heart without, so that it's a much faster way to cool down our body. So you could do what we do in palm cooling with your feet as well. However, the, as we were talking about before, the practicality, it's significantly easier to cool the palms of your hands between sets than your feet because you need to have your shoes off and so forth. But you could technically do the same thing with your, the bottoms of your feet. I have something to tell you. So when I was a child, apparently I was a prodigy because I, in, I grew up in Jamaica, and Jamaica is very hot. Obviously, most people know that. And my brothers used to hog the fan, so I needed to get the fan a lot. And uh, I figured out that after, if I were to wet a, a rag yeah. and make, make it cold, put it on my feet, I would sleep like a baby because I was cool, right? So this is the same concept. Now, there's more science involved, with, of course, with what you're talking about as far as the, you know, keeping that at a certain yeah. different temperature and so on and so forth. So I wasn't that far ahead. But I figured out that if I kept my feet cool, my rest of my body would be cool and I would sleep a whole lot better. Even now, when I take a shower, my feet, or if I feel hot, I'll go put some water on my, cold water on my feet and I'll sleep like a baby. Tip, yeah. tip from your boy Zeke over here. So that's yeah. exactly what you're talking about. But again, it would be a lot, it would be a lot harder to do that in the gym and, um, and also, or even wear something on my feet to keep yeah. me cool while I'm working out. So I get the practicality piece. Ex exactly. And, and that's like, actually, if you think about it, if, if you're lying in bed and you have your duvet on and it's a bit warm, putting the hand, like we, we instinctively going to put out our feet and maybe our hands as well. And that's the most effective way for us to kind of cool down when it's a bit too warm under our duvet. And this also works if you want to heat up your body. Uh, so both ways there. And, and if you know instinctively, if we come out, maybe happen less to you, you in Florida than it does in, me in the London region, but when it's cold outside, we like we would do this because that's a very effective way to heat up our body. And like we've seen this from our ancestor and they picked up on this, that it, that just works. Um, that one works both ways, actually. Perfect. I love that. I didn't pick up on that. We're 100% right. And instinctively, we just do that. So that makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Can we automatic? If we get around a fire, we're cold. Then we, we do this, right? And we put our hand over the fire and yeah. stuff like that. So that, that makes perfect sense. It leads me to my next question, because I want to talk about the P-Performance Bar. 
Yeah. Um, explain that as well. And do you use that along with palm cooling or how effective, how is that effective? Yeah. So the peak performance bar, I can put it there. It's, this is basically a bar that uh, you fill with water and then you fill it with like ice sticks like this to make sure it gets the right temperature. You have a little bit of a, a temperature meter here, so you can see it's roughly. And then you just hold it in your hands like this between the sets. And I can tell you, it's a lot more practical than putting your hands in a bucket of water between every set, man. I can tell you that much. So like basically what happened for me was that I, I felt that, you know, like this was really good. Like I, and I realized that first of all, it wasn't well known. Uh, and it's very not well known how temperature impacted performance. And I kind of felt that I needed to create something for this. Like, so I started, yeah, I basically created this product because I was like, this is, it's made such a difference for me. And I know it can make a huge difference for others as well. And like the studies are very clear on what a huge benefit it can do. So like, yeah, I, I felt that I had to, I had to, do something about this. Like I'm a bit, I have an entrepreneurial mind and I just felt like I had to, I had to create something that could help people work out harder. Um, and right. that's how. And I love it. And you know, it's so even, and not even for a joke, we said, not even just for elite, elite athletes, but you're yeah. trying to build muscle. You're trying to uh, get to that next level. You know, even if, even if, you know, whatever you're trying to accomplish by when you're working out, it's not just with lifters either. Cause we, you know, no. there are, there are other, if you do high intensity type workouts and so jogging may be a little bit more difficult, but if, you know, but even certain cardio exercises, right. That can be very beneficial. It can help you in a lot of ways. So I, I definitely love the bar and I'm assuming it's so that it's temperature controlled. So it helps to keep it around that temperature that yeah. ideal for your body as well. So Timmy, with that being said, let my audience know more. Okay. If you, anything yeah. you want to drop that I haven't asked, that's fine. And uh, tell us where we can purchase your product and uh, just, you know, Give me your shameless plugs, man. Yeah, sure, man. Uh, so one thing, you, you actually mentioned cardio. Like, I'm a lifter, so I talk most about the lifting, and that's how I've seen it. But they have done studies as well where they had people do a uh, one-hour time trial on uh, on bikes. And when they used palm cooling in three days, they cut their uh, time from, like, 60 minutes to 54 on average. Um, th they've also done one where they had overweight people that walked on a treadmill and had two control groups, one not palm cooling and one palm cooling. And the ones that did palm cooling, they decreased their uh, waist circumference by an extra two inches in six weeks. And they could also train at a higher level than they did in the beginning because they they didn't feel as exhausted and they didn't sweat as much, which is a problem for a lot of people that are kind of overweight and getting into the thing. So like, as you said, it covers the entire spectrum of like NFL players to overweight people that walked one and a half mile in half an hour on a treadmill. Like that's pretty much as, as wide as the exercise spectrum can, can be. Um, yeah, and then so we think, I'm sorry, Tim, just to cut you off real quick, just, I'm sorry, but not to cut you off, or maybe I did cut you off, let's say, but something else I was thinking about, I was sitting here is even being in a, talking about the sweating and even being in colder temperatures. Now I can't, I don't have the science to back it up directly to palm cooling, but we do know that when you're in a colder state, your body tends to use more fat for energy. When you start to mm -hmm. overheat and you think when you're hotter, that's like in hotter months, we use more glucose for energy. So that's something that could also be beneficial. If you know anything about that, Timmy, you can add into that, but I can see where the fat burning can be a benefit as well. Yeah, I, I'm i not aware of any kind of studies or anything that has gone in that level of detail and it's hard to measure on yourself if unless you have the right equipment, but I can definitely see that helping out as well that you can, but also you can just push yourself a bit further, like, because as you said, a lot of the energy becomes heat and when that becomes a limiting factor, it limits how much you can push your body and then can you lift. But yeah, let's, uh, let's get to the shameless plugs. Uh, <laughs> for anybody who want to buy the uh, Prime Science uh, Peak Performance Bar, just uh, Google Prime Science or uh, go to primescience.co.uk. Uh, primescience.co.uk, we're a UK company. Or on Instagram, you can find us for Prime Science Health. Um, we are trying to expand a little bit our uh, network there as well. So please give us a follow and uh, we'll share things about how cold, not just palm cooling, also brown fat type of things. I'm sure you know well what that is and 
but your audience can also get a little bit of information around that there. So please give us a follow on. Perfect. And I'll make sure that the websites are in the show notes. Show notes going to be zkhealth.com slash prime science. And of course, because, you know, I am such a nice guy. I'll make sure that the show notes are in the description of the podcast to make your life easier. So you can click on it, learn more about Prime Science, learn more about Prime Cooling, also purchase their products as well, because I can definitely see this be beneficial for you. And I will I'll have Timmy and others on the show in the future as more information comes out about this wonderful, groundbreaking science um, um, product. And with that being said, Timmy, thank you for being here. Everybody, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day, fam. Thank you.